Hello and welcome back to another episode of Rim Wars. Now you may have noticed the transport pods that I have built and originally my intent was to use these to attack nearby bases. However, I think we're going to test out the synthetic crystals we made in the last episode and use them to gain some allies. We're gonna load up two of the crystals. We are loading fuel into these things as we speak. Uh, as well as maybe s just send some medicine over. Uh, I want to clear out some of our storage space. We are going to be chopping some trees. So I just want to make sure that we are keeping some storage open and available if we need it. Let's just stop there and maybe we'll see how much it will net us if we send over two crystals. It only costs us 50 blocks to make these so we can mass produce them. And I do want to become friends with the rebels if possible. Uh, if we take a look here, the closest rebel base is actually pretty far away. I believe it is this one here, and we are located here, so we may not be able to reach it in time. Uh, otherwise, I would like to get the Circa Union on our side. They are pretty close by. We do have the Galactic Empire here, as well as a few gun tribes. The Lyra tribe, who we are working on wiping out, and, uh, and past that, everyone is pretty far away. We do have these guys here as well as the misery rig and so we could look at maybe sending some uh, sending some attacks that way. However, we're going to need a lot of transport pods if we're going to send one colonist per pod and they do cost a little a decent amount of material to make. So I figured we would use these to gain some allies first and then see what happens past that. So we're gonna load up the crystals in, I believe it was this one. Yeah, it is ready for launch. So we are going to launch it and send it this way, beyond maximum range. Hmm. So maybe we will buddy up with the Circa Union. It will gain us 58 and we will basically be Oh, can we reach this one? No, we cannot. Uh, it will basically put us... We'll be close to 100. I think we're at 35 with them right now. And so we'll be uh, into the 90s, which is good. Uh, it would be nice if we could extend the range of this. I'm not aware of any way that you can. So if you guys do know, let me know in the comment section down below. Uh, I would like to wipe out basically every threat within this area. And so we will be wiping out this base here as well as the Galactic Empire uh, and the guns. Obviously the guns hate us no matter what we do, so we're not going to be giving them any material. However, looking at the Empire, they will gain 137. I think they're at negative 80 right now, as well as these guys, and so that would give us a pretty hefty bonus, and for the cost of 100 stone blocks, it's definitely something to weigh out, so let me know your thoughts in the comments section down below. However, we are going to give it to Circa Union first. We are allies now, which is good. And I believe that extends to all bases. And so we could ally with every single one on this map. Uh, minus the guns, we will just wipe them out. However, uh, I do want to experiment around a little bit with those launch pads. Uh, seeing as we're making these things for the cost of 50 and maybe a day's work, uh, not even. It's super easy to make them, and so we will be able to work on our relationships pretty quickly and gain some, uh, some positive relations very easily. And so that is something that I wanted to look into. Now, I think a good goal for this episode would be to get on the plasteel making end of things. Uh, I don't know what exactly our colonists have been doing, but we've been sitting at the same number of plasteel for a while other than what we've been buying. And so I do want to get that happening. I guess it's because we have been making the lightsabers and we've been making some components. We will cancel all of those for now. Uh, obviously we don't need to make any more lightsabers or casings for that matter. We determined in the last episode it really isn't worth it to be making your lightsabers. It is much more worth your while to make the crystals and sell them and maybe buy the lightsaber materials just the amount of work that it takes to make them it just doesn't weigh out and so we will uh, we will up the bill for the lightsaber crystals and maybe look at calling an exotic goods trader over 
and buying some plasteel that way. I would like to get our plasteel number up for sure. We do need to hit 5,000 in order to build the razor crest. We do have the amount of steel that we need, uh, as well as components. We're sitting at eight advanced components. And so we're almost there on that end. Gold, I believe we have enough gold as well. It's somewhere in here. We're five short. And so we're definitely not going to be struggling to get the gold. And so the only thing that is really holding us back from building this guy is the plasteel. And so I want to figure out the best way to, I guess we can delete this now, the Ambroasia sadly has left us, but the best way to get the plasteel on our side so we can hammer out this razor crest. Uh, I do have these guys just strip mining right now. We are looking for good sources of steel as you do need quite a bit of steel to make the plasteel and so that is something to take note of as well. We are using the Rimefeller mod. It is a powerhouse of a mod where you can produce plasteel as well as synthread and uh, a few other things. Chemfuel is always available for us now which is really nice. It's a really nice mod to have. Uh, not so overpowered that it will break your game. It's just nice to have when you need a lot of plasteel for a project like the Razor Crest or a heavy addition of chem fuel to your game. And so, yeah, I think the goal is to get the uh, plasteel functioning and working. And in order to do that, I have covered it in the past, but you need to eventually work the oil out of the drill all the way through here. We need chem fuel in order to make the synthaline, and then they mix the synthaline with the steel in order to make the plasteel and it needs to sit in here for uh, I think it's around a day it needs to sit in there for and it produces some plasteel it will bump up your numbers pretty quickly if you are working on it but we have not been and so we are falling behind on that and we are going to lose all of our crops which is so sad but uh, we do have lots of food right now as a matter of fact we need to get this rice out of here because uh, it is keeping our freezer door open, which is not great. The other thing we are working towards right now is researching blast tech weapons. Now, it would be good to look at some of these weapons. I'm especially interested in Mando's heavy weapon, uh, but making some blasters and equipping our colonists with some actual good weapons, we are uh, a little bit primitive not primitive I would say but we are a lot of our weapons are in a poor condition and so it would be nice to get them up a little bit and so we have constructed the blast tech bench we have everything we need we just need to get the research done and I will be looking at the blast tech weapons as well the one thing I would be curious to add is the droids I have seen them walking through and it seems like by taking a look at their needs tab they don't actually need food or rest i may be wrong on that but that's just the initial impression that i get they don't have any of those tabs uh, available and so i'm wondering if we build a droid army <laughs> i guess you would say uh if we would have better luck so yeah if we get a good grip on uh, plasteel production then everything will go a lot smoother and having the droids around we could maybe get them to mine and just uh, take everyone else off of mining and just have droids that are constantly working away at the mines uh, I think that would be probably the best for our colonists I'm sure they're getting a lot of mood debuffs in this massive pit of darkness and just working away in the cold And so that is something to consider now apparel is one of the things in this game that I'm really not a fan of the way that it works It's hard to tell what they're actually having a debuff from wearing. And it's not like if you make it, they will equip the better stuff right away anyways. I had a massive amount of clothes made and ready for them and no one was actually wearing it. So I just dropped the, I stopped worrying about it. Uh, I would, now we do have a lot of options because of these Star Wars mods. I'm thinking that we make a few Sith hoods, a few Jedi hoods, and maybe that will help. And uh, past that, what else would, we use maybe some scout jackets we have 10 tattered apparel right now so I'm gonna make 10 uh, 10 sets of clothes from hoods all the way down to pants 
just want to look at the different options that the uh, Star Wars modes actually give us. I haven't taken that in depth of a look to, uh, we don't really want the Imperial garb. I don't really like it. Uh, so maybe we just go with some base pants. We could also make a Jedi robe and a Sith robe. That might be nice for Jendo and Terra. Uh, however, the rest of them can just wear regular pants, I suppose. We don't really have uh, any Star Wars style options that I can see. And so I have used the Tusken Raider garb in the past, but it wasn't that great for, uh, for protection. And so I don't want to go that route again. And so we'll just experiment around a little bit and see what works and get them out of this tattered apparel. It is kind of annoying to constantly have them with a debuff of ratty apparel, so we really should get that fixed. They, we have some visitors from the droid army. Now there are only two of them. I think this is a good opportunity to take them as hostage. Who is suffering from hypothermia? Star. We don't have a heater in our hospital, which is not great. And yeah, maybe we look at taking these two droids as prisoner. And seeing what it takes to recruit them and get them on their side because as you can see their needs are very very low and it seems like their bio they can do everything they have an annoying voice so we're not going to be too happy to have them around the base but uh yeah they seem like they are great to have on board and so i would really like to get these guys in our colony i mean as you can see that we could set them to craft or to do plants or anything really uh, that is just the one of them and we have a hundred percent chance of arresting them 98 with Terra and so this is basically a for sure let's get Kruger to hide away here uh, Kruger is down, which is unfortunate. Terra needs to attack this guy. Hopefully we don't kill him. It would be nice to take him as prisoner as well. However, we do have one, which is good. And just look at the lightsaber defense. It's really nice to have this. Um, Zara, you need to rescue your buddy here. Uh, let's just check his health while we're down here. He's not really in any uh, any immediate danger, but we do have this guy as our yeah. We do have him as our prisoner now, which is good. We will use these guys as essentially slaves. So yeah, let's take a look at the prisoner. Uh, they have a resistance of 20 and 18, so it will take a little bit of time. Uh, maybe we send the Separatist droid army a little gift after this, but we want these guys a part of our base as soon as possible. Uh, it seems like they are a zero upkeep, but uh, always helpful <laughs> body to have around. And one is a pyromaniac, uh, incapable of firefighting, which is fine. We can handle any firefighting with the amount of people that we do have. Does have a passion for mining. Uh, as well as medical, so maybe we'll have a medical droid, or maybe we will just set them in the mines. I'm not quite sure what route we'll go yet, but uh, but yeah, I don't think it'll take too long to get these guys on board. They just have blaster burns, so they'll recover fine, I'm assuming. And yeah, let's see what it takes to get these guys on our team and what they're capable of doing. I will skip ahead until we are recruited with them, I think, unless something else comes up as RimWorld goes. It usually does have uh, have things that get in the way. So, uh, but yeah, let's skip a little bit of time here until we have those guys on our side. So we have had an exotic goods trader come into the area. And the one thing I am curious about is they have a Gizka. And, uh, I don't know what this is, however, I think I'm going to buy it. Uh, we should probably buy some of their components and other things as well, and they will buy our uh, crystals, so we're going to buy every component they have. Anything that may help us, uh, maybe a bionic spine, and maybe an architect leg as well. Uh, I do want to get a television, so we'll see 
how much we can get for all of these crystals first off uh, again easy to make so not the end of the world if we sell them all uh, let's buy their advanced components and all of their components and prioritize here and we have all of their plasteel as well and so now it looks like the only things that we would want is maybe the architect leg and uh, I guess that will put us at uh, pretty much even and so I think we uh, well let's buy a television and we will lose a little bit of silver but again silver is not the uh, <laughs> we're not going to be short on silver at all anytime soon and so I do want to get a television in here for these guys because I think they deserve it with all that they've been through uh, and so we will uh, we will get Gendo making more lightsaber crystals now the other thing is who do we ha want to have the architect leg? Uh, let's just take a look at their health right now. So Terra is at full, Gendo is at full. Do we want to give it, I think the biggest thing I'm considering is do we want to give it to someone who is uh, a little bit slower with moving? See, the right little toe on Revith has been destroyed. However, Revith never does combat, so we're not too worried about that. Uh, Zer has a bionic leg already, as well as Lilhorn. See, Braga would be a very good person to give it to, as well as Gen Do. Uh, Lowell has no leg, but uh, Lowell doesn't do much for our colony, so we're not going to worry about him. I think we're just going to give it to Gen Do. Uh, we're going to set the operation to uh, install it on his right leg and hope for the best here. <laughs> I know how these operations can fail and so we definitely want to get our best medic on the job. Let's hope that Revith can pull this off. Would be very nice for Gendo to have this upgrade. And he is almost there. So far, no failures. And it has been a success. So he has an architect leg now. His efficiency is at 150. And let's just take a look at the overall movement speed. Right now is nothing, so it'll take a little bit for him to wake up out of his drug-induced uh, coma. But... Uh, once he's up and moving, we'll take a look at his moving and manipulation and see how much that actually did for him and if it was worth it. For 150 stone blocks, it probably was. But uh, as always, we want to take a look at the stats and see if we could have spent that 3,000 in a better state. Okay, so we have recruited our first droid. He is a member of society now. And yeah, it seems like he is just able to do everything a regular colonist is able to do. Uh, I don't want him on wardening as he is socially inept and he is a droid. However, we will get him to start mining right away. And past that, hauling and cleaning I think is probably the best route to go. So it seems like he isn't really uh, able to function by himself. Uh, I did need to direct him where to haul before he became unidle. So we'll just take a quick look at what happens as these as the night goes on. If he continues to haul or if he doesn't and just does one individual object at a time. And he does. So this is the downside to having a droid. Uh, is that they, the dumb AI that they have... Let's just take a look at his bio. So he's a simple AI. So it seems like these guys will be better to have for raids and that kind of thing. As I'm constantly going to be having to give him directions. He doesn't uh, decide to do things by himself. He <laughs> needs to be directed exactly what to do. And so I'm wondering if there is a way to upgrade these guys. I'm sure that there is. I'm sure that you guys would know better than me. But uh, that is my current thought if we I'm pretty sure we can mm, no we can't make a advanced AI for the droid 
so let's just let him keep working away slowly and maybe we will assign him to a long-term research task. Once he hauls this, let's get him to start mining and see if he only does the one block or if he does a lot of the blocks. And if he is able to just continue this task, then obviously it's really good to have these guys around. Otherwise, they are pretty much just cannon fodder, as uh, they're not really useful for anything. Which makes sense, droids in the Star Wars universe aren't really useful for anything. But uh, it would be nice to have some sort of job that they can continue to do. And we don't. They just kind of wander. I guess you can queue the uh, droid to do certain things, so you can just set him to mine a ton of blocks. However, uh, I'm not able to even access this one, obviously, because of the way that the Rimworld design is. And so he's going to mine these four blocks, and then he will be done with his job, and we will have to reassign him. So definitely going to take advantage of queuing up their jobs. For those of you who may not be aware, you do that by highlighting the job and then uh, hitting shift while you click it. But uh, but yeah, I think that these guys may be a little bit difficult to work with, but they will bring some benefits to the colony. So they definitely are worth keeping around, but def just not as uh, efficient as I did. As I guess I expected. The nice thing is the droid does not seem to need a bedroom. Uh, he hasn't taken the one unowned bed yet, so he is going to just constantly wander around our base and uh, <laughs> just do his thing, which is fine. It will take a long time, or it is going to be kind of annoying to highlight every single job, but yeah, it's going to be not as beneficial as I thought it would be to have a droid around. With that being said, I think we may end the episode here. I really wanted to see what the droids would do, and it definitely wasn't what I expected, what I had hoped, but it is good to know. We will make Mando's heavy weapon before the end of the episode and get Revith or Space General to equip that, and then we will call it there. But yeah, thanks so much for watching. Uh, if you're interested in more of these Star Wars mods and breakdowns, make sure to hit the subscribe button if you're not already. A uh, large portion of my viewers are not subscribed, and so uh, it would be nice to see you guys join the community. I also want to put out some feelers. If you've watched for this long, I am considering creating a Discord uh, just for the community so we can talk about RimWorld. You guys can give me little bits of info as uh, as it comes up and uh, just a better way to communicate with you guys because I don't really like the comment section on YouTube uh, it's not the most efficient way and so thought about maybe making a discord for you guys uh, so let me know in the comments down below if that's something you'd be interested in I would be looking for a moderator or two as well so if you want to help on that front make sure to let me know and uh, and we'll make it happen and so yeah, we'll skip ahead here until this gun is finished. We'll see how big it is because it looks pretty massive. And then we will uh, end the episode there. And we have made Mando's heavy weapon now. Uh, where is it going is the next question. And that thing is absolutely massive. So let's get Space General to equip this. And I don't think that we're ever going to have an issue. Uh, oh, it doesn't show up as big when she's holding it. But... Uh, Let's take a look at her gear and take a look at this thing. So it does do, it is worth quite a bit. It was not, definitely not worth the components uh, that it required, but, uh, but yeah, I really want to see this thing in combat. If you guys do as well, make sure to hit that subscribe button and, uh, and we'll be testing it out very soon, I'm sure. Uh, we are due for a raid. It has been quite a bit of time before since we've had one and so we will be uh, looking at experiencing that soon and seeing what that thing does in action but for now that will be the end of the episode uh, we are going to call it here on the next one I think we look at taking out uh, another enemy base or maybe I will work on gathering the plus steel needed I'm not quite sure just yet but uh, but anyways yeah I am at Switz 
This has been another episode of Rim Wars, and we will catch you on the next one. Thank you.